As the Depression deepened, the market for yachts in the Pacific Northwest dried up. Geary decided to look for a more promising arena in which to ply his trade. So we went to Hollywood and, and uh, found a lucrative niche in, in designing boats for, for famous Hollywood stars. Uh, these people at that time in history um, had a tremendous amount of wealth, um, were able to afford the, the finest boats, the finest um, pleasure craft available. The architects like Geary were the, uh, the, the finest architects, naval architects in that, at that time period. So as a result, um, some of the, the more famous yachts of the time um, were designed by Northwest architects and often built here uh, in the Northwest. The Malibu brought Geary and N.J. Blanchard together again. Uh, the Blanchard Yard had built the 115-foot Simona for Willits J. Hole, the oil man down in California. It was completed in 1923. His sister-in-law, May Ringe, owner of the Malibu Ranch that roughly corresponded to present-day Malibu, California, decided she needed a motor yacht as well. She broached the idea to Willits Hole. He thought that was a capital idea. He only had one requirement, and that was that nobody other than N.J. Blanchard build the Malibu. So that's how Geary and, and N.J. came to work together again after they'd had a bit of a split in 1923, and it was actually their last collaboration. Today, the vessel remains a study in elegance. Geary was celebrated for his sailing yachts as well as motor yachts, but in the fan tales, he conceived his signature design. Malibu was a very heavily built boat, uh, built by Blanchard, and uh, built of one of the heaviest construction that I've seen, uh, built like any tug, uh, built to last, and it's evident today when you go aboard her. I think everybody who, who comes around this boat senses the specialness of it, and how well she's built and how beautiful she's she's been maintained and 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 just her her form is the design of her is so you know so spectacular really Curie's fantails were just so elegant the shape of them I think he was probably at his peak in designing those and certainly head above many other naval architects uh, I think Blue Peter has maybe the most pronounced, but there's just, the design of him is just elegant. As far as these motor yachts go, you can see one on the water and just pretty much immediately tell it was a Ted Geary design. Fan tails were a design holdover from the age of sail. The rounded sterns made elegant areas for passengers to enjoy. When I went aboard the Blue Peter, I. I felt like I was being transported back into the 1920s. The Blue Peter has an aft deck that you can just, you can just envision flapper grooves, a, a jazz band. I mean, that boat was built for that era. That boat is also um, in perfect condition, uh, perfect original condition. Um, it has luxury written all over it. The long, slender hull shape of the Geary fantail had a functional purpose as well. For full displacement hulls, uh, the speed that a boat can attain is directly related to its waterline length. And so by making them long and narrow, uh, it, it led for a very efficient vessel. Geary designed the 120-foot riveted steel Thea Foss, christened Infanta, for an even more famous client, the actor John Barrymore. The Thea Foss, that boat's history should become a movie. Barrymore, at the height of his career, had so much money that uh, it's hard to imagine. They uh, had to build a reasonably large boat and an extremely strong boat in order to uh, 
safely carry this muff I am proud of. Ted Geary had designed another vessel for a, a fellow who was cruising it in Southern California, and John Barrymore saw the boat at anchor in Wilmington Harbor and, and ran out to it in a runabout and hopped aboard immediately. He was very forward and brash and told the owner that he wanted to buy this boat. The owner said, this boat isn't for sale, but if you'll keep a civil tongue in your mouth, I'll introduce you to the designer and he can design you one and build it for you. And this is the result. It's a Northwest design, uh, typical of the yachts of this area. This is a larger version of some of the, there were quite a few in the 100 foot range. And this uh, Thea being 120 feet is a little bit larger and being steel is a little different that way. But otherwise it's very much in the style of the Ted Geary fantails. Barrymore named it Infanta after his, his firstborn child. He used the vote very little. It was designed primarily for his wife. Uh, he lavished every imaginable opulence possible from a grand piano to you name it on that boat. Not long after that, uh, Barry Morse drinking uh, began to rule his life. Uh, he virtually lost the boat to creditors. Well, this is the Fantail Lounge area, and originally it would have been opened completely to the elements. Now it has a canvas curtain around it that makes it accessible during all weather conditions. It was a great place for people to lounge and relax. The, uh, like many boats in the Pacific Northwest, was, was conscripted into World War II service. It was completely painted navy gray. The saloon is a uh, nice warm place for gatherings and uh, has a skylight in the overhead, lets lots of light in and large windows for viewing scenery and uh, is heated and warm and just a cozy place to be. Her interior was stripped. Barrymore's luxuries, God knows where they went to. Um, she had cannons mounted on her decks. The library area is a place where you can kind of get away from it, uh, a little smaller, more intimate setting where people can have quiet conversations. She spent the next four years um, in the service uh, under hard use, military use. Below decks are uh, a series of staterooms of different sizes and configurations, and the uh, guests would uh, uh, stay in those areas. After the war, boats like this were uh, basically put up for auction. Uh, many of them were never reclaimed by the original owners because they were in such bad condition. On the upper deck is the wheelhouse. And directly behind that is the captain's stateroom. The captain would have all his equipment and his uh, gear stowed in the stateroom and be always readily available to uh, attend to whatever needs there would be. Thea Foss was eventually uh, purchased by the Foss Tug Company. They purchased her for the purpose of a luxury yacht. Uh, they began an amazing restoration process. Um, today she's one of the finest boats on the, on the West Coast.